what I want to say. I've never heard God speak to me audibly, not in a, a big loud voice or even in a, a gentle whisper. I've spoken to others who have, and maybe some of you have heard God speak to you in that way. I, I haven't. The closest I've ever come to this was many years ago when we were still farming. It came uh, not as an actual voice, but as a very powerful impression. And it came as a, as a question rather than a command. I can still picture where I was standing in a paddock of potatoes. And the question, what would God have to do if he really wanted to get my attention? And the answer came instantly and with the same kind of clarity and intensity. He'd probably have to break my leg. We were very busy at the time. We had three young children. We were growing potatoes on our own small farm and leasing Loris's parents' farm. Spent a lot of time shifting tractors and implements from one farm to the other. Church life was busy too, with music on a Sunday, teaching Sunday school and leading a growing youth group. Not a lot of time for quiet reflection. I was playing football when Chicken Jennings broke his leg. The play was on the opposite side of the ground, but I could still hear the crack. That day in the potato paddock, I made a kind of deal with God. Not sure that you should do this sort of thing. <laughs> I'll give you my undivided attention. Please don't break my leg. Yeah. <laughs> That marked the start of a, a series of events, some small, others rather dramatic, that saw us sell our farm, go to Bible college and ultimately come to Wangaratta. That day in the paddock started a change to my involvement in the mission of God's kingdom, but it wasn't the beginning. For me, that came at around 13 when I first became a Christian. The same was true for you. From the moment you received personally the, the new life that Jesus provided, you enlisted in the service of his kingdom. This morning, uh, we pick up the series that Ian began for us last week. Thanks, Ian. Great message last week. Jesus reinstated Peter after Peter's sad denial. Specifically this morning, Pastor Steve has given me the topic Recover your sense of mission. What a challenge, a great challenge uh, for a new year. As we saw in the, that one of the readings, Peter and his brother Andrew were the first disciples that Jesus called and mission was there right from the beginning. What did Jesus say when he called them? Come, follow me and I will show you how to fish for people. If you're around my age, you'll know that he really said, follow me and I will, what? Make you fishes of men. There we go. Doesn't matter. Whichever translation you use, the message is the same. Follow me. I have a job for you. That's mission. Fast forward, as we did in the readings, to the end of Matthew's Gospel and in Jesus' last recorded words, he repeats and he clarifies that mission for all of his followers. Go and make disciples of all the nations. We call it the Great Commission. Given verbally to those first disciples back then, recorded for us today as a call to mission to every follower of Jesus ever since. We've been saved to serve. Back to that in a moment. As Ian told us last week, Peter had made an absolute mess of things. When Jesus needed Peter most, Peter had blown it, denied even knowing Jesus. And as soon as he heard that rooster crow, the enormity of what he had done really hit him. Now, on the beach that day, this, this was crunch time for Peter. Judas had let Jesus down too. Boy, did Judas let Jesus down. He never recovered. To his credit, Peter fronted up and Jesus had some questions for Peter. Actually, he had the same question, didn't he? And he asked the same question three times. 
Jesus asked Peter to own the one qualification required to serve Jesus. Peter, do you love me? Do you really love me more than these? It's not so hard to love Jesus a bit. He's a good guy. Even most non-believers acknowledge this. I'm not sure we fully understand what Jesus went, meant when he asked, Peter, do you love me more than these? And it probably doesn't matter. Jesus asks us, is your love for me a priority? And he gives us a, a one-word test to judge the strength or the reality of our love for him. Obedience. I should quickly say that our relationship with Jesus is different from all other relationships. If anyone else had said, show me your love, obey me, we'd accuse them of manipulation or coercion or something worse. Jesus, with all the authority of the Trinity behind him, has earned the right to insist that we demonstrate our love through obedience. Do you really love me this morning more than anything else? Show me. Don't just tell me. Show me. Are you up for this challenge this morning? Do you really love me, Peter? I still have a job for you. Feed my sheep. I'm fascinated by the metaphors that Jesus uses throughout his uh, ministry. Let's continue to look at this ministry that he's entrusted to us and I want to suggest this morning that it involves two parts. We'll call the first part a general call to mission. Sounds a bit technical, doesn't it? A general call to mission. This also has two parts. Firstly, come, follow me. This is a part of our mission. Follow me, be my disciple. That's what a disciple is. Someone who follows and practices the master's teaching. And then from the Great Commission, go make other disciples. That's Jesus' general call to mission and it's for us all. Come, be a disciple, go make other disciples. Let's call the second part a particular call to mission. And we see it right back in Jesus' first words to Peter. Come, follow me, that's general. And I will show you how to fish for people. That's a particular. There on the beach that morning, Jesus chose a different morning, a different metaphor. Do you love me, Peter? Feed my sheep. Fish for people, that sounds like evangelism. Feed my sheep, that sounds like the work of a pastor. Perhaps a diagram might help clarify this. I'm into diagrams a bit. The general call to mission is for us all and it doesn't change. The particular call to mission will be different for each of us. I wonder, where do you fit in this diagram? There are many different particular roles in Jesus' overall mission to draw people into his kingdom as disciples. Do you love Jesus this morning? Be sure he has a role for you. After his tragic denial, Peter was ready to give up. But Jesus wasn't ready to give up on Peter. He'd invested three years of ministry training in Peter, sharing some amazing experiences, showing him how a true follower should live. But beyond that, Jesus had suffered and died on the cross for Peter. Then we know God raised him to life again, and now Jesus was offering Peter a second chance and a new expanded role in his kingdom. Now the ball was in Peter's court. Would he wallow in remorse over his stupidity, his cowardice? Or would he grasp this new opportunity and demonstrate his declared love for Jesus through practical service? Those of us who have ever blown it, can take great comfort and encouragement from Peter's response. I'm sure he never forgot the greatest mistake of his life, 
but he didn't let that define him and neither should we. Follow Peter's progress into the book of Acts, hear his great sermon on the day of Pentecost. What an evangelist. Read again his letters in the back of our New Testament See and hear here his pastor's heart. Sometimes we just have to get over ourselves. Peter probably made other mistakes. We will too. You know the best way to avoid mistakes? Don't ever do anything. Peter made a big one, but Jesus saw beyond it to his true potential and he sees your potential too better than you do. Has your sense of mission suffered a bit recently? Peter's had, so he decided to go fishing instead. Turns out that night, he wasn't much good at fishing either until Jesus intervened. Don't you love this story? If you get nothing else this morning, catch the real hope there is of those who love Jesus and are prone to making mistakes. I love this story, but I found the two verses that Steve gave me for today quite confronting, especially verse 18. Jesus said to Peter, when you were young, you were able to do as you liked. We did, didn't we? You dressed yourself and went wherever you wanted to go. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and others will dress you oh, and take you where you don't want to go. Anyone else find that thought confronting? Once again, Jesus has changed the metaphor for Peter. While mission in general remains, our particular roles can and usually do change with time. And there's an ominous note here in this new metaphor for Peter and for us. What changes, what further changes are ahead for me as I continue to grow older? My mother spent her last years in a nursing home with dementia. She watched as this lovely, intelligent, articulate woman lost just about everything except her sweet, gentle nature for which we were very grateful. Dementia sometimes seems to run in families. I definitely don't want to go there. And I'm sorry if this is a bit close to home for some of you as I suspect it might be this morning. Verse 19 is a little more positive but it's still sobering. Jesus said this to let Peter know by what kind of death he would glorify God. And then Jesus told him, follow me. Even in death, Jesus had a role for Peter. We know he did follow Jesus. Peter died as a, meta as a metaphor. He died as a martyr for Jesus. I'm sure he didn't want to go there. Let me speak for a moment to the older members of our church, my peers this morning. You youngsters may like to switch off for a moment or you may like to consider what lies ahead for you just a little down the track. There comes a time as we grow older when we are no longer the best or the right person for a particular role that we may have once had. That's not the end of our responsibility to the general mission that Jesus has given the church. We can pray. We've been reminded of that again this morning. Even those of us who have never found prayer easy can learn to better serve in this way. Steve has been urging us to pray quite consistently in recent times, to pray more. Let's take Steve's urging to heart. I suspect that if we were all to do a little less and pray a whole lot more, the collective ministry of our church would blossom. We oldies are well pleased to take up this challenge. Let me suggest another way that our seniors can continue to serve the ministry of encouragement. I learned the value of this again many years ago. Our 
Then pastor and his wife took uh, the four other couples in our small church away on a weekend retreat with Noel Smith from New Life for All. It was rather intense and confronting for a couple of dedicated introverts. In one of his exercises, two of us had to come up with ideas to present to the group. Ian Grummish, a, a lovely older man, went first. Our task was to pour cold water on his idea. To this day, I can't recall what Grum came up with, but I'm afraid we all joined in the spirit of things with great enthusiasm. What were you thinking, Grum? That will never work. That's the stupidest thing I've heard all year. You can imagine how we carried on. Grum survived. I was chosen next. Put on the spot, I had to come up with an idea. This time, fortunately, the group was to be lavish with their encouragement. The youth group Loris and I were leading at the time had grown. A few of the young people actually left the group. They finished school and after school most of them found work locally and they continued to come to our youth group. The boys, young men now, were great but a bit wild and adventurous. They rode motorbikes, bought cars, stacked their bikes, pranged some cars and a couple of them blew their licences. Why don't I form a basketball team and play with these guys? Well, the group thought this was a fantastic idea and I was pretty clever to come up with it. What a great way for these guys to burn off some energy instead of burning rubber on the road. You really should do this. It really did feel good to be encouraged like that. And of course the story didn't end there. Loris and I talked about it on the way home. Maybe it could actually work. I spoke to the others. Did they really think it was a good idea or was it all about the exercise? No, it was a great idea and they continued to encourage us. We entered our team in one of the lower grades in a comp in the Latrobe Valley and we did okay. And it really helped me to get alongside these young men. We played together for a number of years, right up until we left for college, and the team continued to play for several years after that. It would never have happened apart from that rather contrived exercise. Encouragement is a powerful thing. How many of you have been watching the tennis a little too late at night this, this past week? See how, yeah, me too. See how the Australians play better with the home crowd encouraging them. You know what's better than doing something yourself? Watching another generation rise up, doing things better than you could and celebrating it with them. It's easy to become a bit negative as we grow older. We can't do many of the things we used to. And all around us, things are changing, often in ways that we don't like. Others probably don't need to hear about it all the time. I'm talking to myself this morning, but you can listen too if you like. Sometimes a, a simple word of encouragement can make a huge difference. A simple thank you to those on the front line can give them a real boost. Talk to someone young. Better still... Listen to someone young. We think we remember what it was like to be young. It's different today. You may never know how much your encouragement has helped and encouragement is just one way. Those of us who are older can still be involved in the mission of the church in the world. There are many other ways. Let's, let's be creative. Let's be available. Loris and I took something else away from our weekend retreat. On a whiteboard, Noel Smith drew for us a metaphor for the church. Noel was a, a great speaker. He was a pretty ordinary artist, I'd have to say. And his artwork looked something like this. Too many churches, Noel told us, are like a boat full of people with just one person, the pastor, doing all the rowing. Imagine this is our, our church. There's poor Steve up the front, rowing his little heart out with the rest of us uh, along for the ride. Now, we're not like that. 
but we could always do more. Noel said his goal was to put an oar in everybody's hand. I want to modify Noel's picture of the church just a little this morning as we finish. Sorry? Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, I share Noel's talent for art, let me tell you. But I do want to modify his picture and I'm not going to do it artistically, I'm going to do it verbally this morning. From time to time, we all need to put down our oars just for a time. And not all at the same time. Mission in its many forms has its challenges and we never want anyone to burn out. If that's you getting close to that point and it can sneak up on us sometimes, put down your oar for a time. Let the rest of us carry you while you recover. But don't sit at the back of the boat for too long. Do you love Jesus this morning? Good. How's your sense of mission? Has a door closed for you recently? Know that Jesus is waiting to open another one. Are you tired? Have you been burned in ministry? It happens. Take some time, but not too much time. Jesus offers us rest, but it's the rest of working alongside him. I wonder, is Jesus speaking to you this morning? like he spoke to Peter that day. Let me encourage you to take time and listen and discover or rediscover the joy of working with him in his kingdom. Let's pray. Father, we, we thank you for the precious gift of your son, the gift that we've been celebrating here this morning. Thank you for the joy, the relief of knowing our sins forgiven and our future safe and secure for all time and eternity. Thank you for the privilege of having a small role in your mighty mission to take this special gift to our, our sad and unsettled world. This morning, Jesus, uh, we want to affirm our love for you and our willingness to work alongside you in your overall mission to make other disciples right around our world. Please show us as a church and as individuals, the particular role you have for us. Help us to seize the opportunities that come with change. This morning, we pray especially for any who, like Peter, have made mistakes or are feeling tired or, or dispirited. Pick them up, we pray. Remind them of their importance to your kingdom. Refresh them. Refresh us all with your spirit. Send us out once more into your harvest field. Revive our sense of mission, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.